Father God, now we just thank you today. We believe the Spirit of God is here. This is the time of the Holy Ghost. And, and Father God, we want to, Lord, now be open for the Spirit of God to write on our hearts and mind, to bring revelation to us, to give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us, to give a heart that understands. And so we just say, yes, 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 please. Please speak to us today by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm so excited. And so we've been talking about this is a year of fulfillment of dreams. And we've been talking now, uh, Dr. Tom and I, about the time of the Holy Ghost. And this is the time of the Holy Ghost. And so there are a few things that I'm going to say here this morning about this. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us this, and Jesus was saying them when he was about to go, John 14, uh, 26, and the Amplified says, but the helper, Jesus was saying the helper, he's talking about the Holy Ghost, and he's saying to us, the comforter, in the Greek language, it explains it as, well, who is he? He's our comforter. He's able to bring comfort to us when there seems to be disaster all around us. He is there to give us that supernatural comfort of, of God's to us. He's our advocate. What does that mean? He is my defender. He stands up for me. He protects me. Hallelujah. He is my intercessor. Oh my goodness. The Bible says he passionately prays for us with groans that can't even be uttered and that he searches all things, even the deep things of, of God for you and for me, and he tells you what is yet to go. He tells you uh, your destiny and what God has for you. He gives you whatever you need at the moment and so that you can be a winner and you can fulfill the destiny of God to you. It even says that he <laughs> shows you how much God loves you and that he's your Abba Father. Hallelujah. And so we receive his intercession, his prayers that are being prayed for us. He's our counselor. Oh, my goodness. I don't need somebody to counsel me. I have the very Holy Ghost, and he's there. When I'm in a situation and I don't know how to solve it, the Holy Ghost is there, and he'll tell me. I remember one time, many times in my life because I need to hear his voice. I need to know which way I to go. I should go. And I remember one time I'm dealing with a, um, you know, a persecutor of my, in my life kind of thing, and I was doing all the right scriptures. You know, I know them. You know the word, but sometimes we don't ask the Holy Ghost. And so I'm a problem solver, so I'm solving that problem. I'm saying, yes, I don't return evil for evil, insult for insult, but rather a blessing that I might inherit a blessing. And I pray for them and all, and all of that. And one day I said, God, I'm done. What do I need to do? I'm doing all of this. And the Lord just showed me. <laughs> he said, first of all, you're a victim. Oh, my goodness, I hate that role. I don't want to ever be a victim. No, in the name of Jesus. And then he said to me, you need to rejoice and be seemly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Boy, the moment I did what the Holy Ghost said and not what I was trying to do, the I got into such joy. I got into rejoicing, got into that leaping of joy in me, and I was free. I was free. It's asking God what is the answer? What do I need to do here? And he wants to tell you. Hallelujah. And then he's my strength. Thereby say, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. So now Jesus said, the Holy Ghost is coming. He's coming in my name. What else is he going to be here? He's going to be, he's coming in his place. He's coming in the place of Jesus to us. He's going to represent Jesus to us. He's going to do this. He's going to act on his behalf. Oh, my goodness. Are we realizing the time and the season that we are in? Are we recognizing this is a time of the Holy Ghost? There's the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are there for us and that the fruit of the Spirit is there for us. They're there. And the Bible says if you say Jesus is Lord, it's the Holy Ghost that will move through your life. 
And then it says this, that he, he will teach me all things. The Holy Spirit is going to teach me all things, but he's never going to take me away from the word. He's going to because he represents Jesus, the word. He's always going to lead me to the word. Somebody says, well, the Holy Ghost told me, well, give me the scripture, give me the verse. That sounds a little goofy to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you better have a scripture if you say the Holy Ghost said it. There's some things that go on that is like that. That don't sound like God. I don't, have a, I don't hear a scripture on that one. That sounds a little bit. A matter of fact, I know it's contrary to the word of God. Because I know the word. All right, and so, and he will help you to remember everything that I have told you. Then it goes on to verse six, chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. However, when the spirit of truth, he's the truth, the word is the truth, and he's the spirit, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into the truth of the word of God. Never contrary to God's word. That's your standard. For, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Who's speaking to you? The Holy Ghost. And he will speak whatever he hears. And he will tell you things to come. And he will glorify me. It's going to be glory to Jesus. He will take what is mine. What is his? What is Jesus? It's a word. And he will declare it to you. Oh, my goodness. So I just want to say that, hallelujah, that Dr. Tom was talking about the Holy Ghost, and we talked about this later, and I wanted to give you an example because he was talking about when it's weird, it's not God, not the Holy Ghost. So, so the, the Word of God tells us how to worship God. Now we have the freedom. We can dance before the Lord. We can shout and sing. We can praise God. We have instruments. We have all kinds of things that it tells us in the word is worship unto God and singing praises to him and worshiping him. And so there about the, probably 20 years ago, maybe less, was there was this this move of God. It was a time when um, Christian leaders were going through hard times and people were going through hard times. A lot of discouragement, a lot of, a lot of problems that are going on that were overwhelming, how the devil throws everything at you but the kitchen sink at times. And there was this move of the outpouring of laughter going on. And it would come over these, these beautiful, powerful men and women of God and the whole congregation, and they would laugh for hours. And they just would laugh and laugh and laugh. And it was the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says, what? We laugh at the works of the devil, that the laughter is like medicine. So that was God. That was the move of the Holy Ghost. And so we were so excited. We, were, we heard about this move. Some of it was going on in the church. And so we went to this big conference with a, a powerful leader of God and a part of this movement. And uh, there were thousands and thousands of people. And we're so excited. We can't wait. And then the worship and the power of God was coming. And then all of a sudden, as the speaker came out to begin to speak, that there were people right next to us and around us. And they were quacking like ducks. And they were walking like ducks. And they were barking. And they were acting like animals. And, and nobody stopped them. And we couldn't hear the speaker. And it was so out of order. And you... That wasn't God. That wasn't God. That was weird. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell me to act like a dog or a duck. And, and so these people around me, and they're quacking and barking. And, 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 and our lead pastor, Scott, was with us. He got up right away and left, you know. <laughs> and we, it didn't take us long. We got out of there, too. It was a bad spirit. What was going on? They took what was the laughter of God, and the devil came in, and that was demonic things going on in that meeting. And, you, and so you have to be able, when Dr. Tom is talking to you, we've been around for 50 years. We have seen everything that could ever happen, I think, of the enemy moving in to try to spoil a movement of God. And, and then it ended. That movement of laughter ended. But the devil came in, 
and was and and caused people to be weird. That what we're saying, Dr. Tom is saying. You, no, you have to know those, those things are weird. And so, just just telling you about that. So, he wanted me to explain the, what we talked about it, giving you an example when he says weird. When somebody says, God told me, I mean, I guess, <laughs> am I brave enough to go there today? Bold! <laughs> People are saying now, I just hear this latest thing going on. And they say the same thing. I'm on a Sabbath rest, so God told me not to go to church. There's too many voices going on. Okay, the Holy Ghost told you? That a Sabbath rest from church? Okay, the scriptures say, do not forsake yourself, right, from the assembly as a matter of some are doing. Uh, the Holy Ghost wouldn't tell you that. Always something that the enemy tries to do. There has been so many times the, the miracle mile that went on and the people that were destroyed and all they wanted to do was seek God and they got into the weirdness and, and so many things like that. People come to the church and they've been destroyed by these demonic forces that are not of God. And we've been a church that's been used to restore them. Hallelujah. So just wanted to tell you that. Hold on, my, my phone is calling. That's all right. I'm okay. I didn't fall. I'm all right. I, not, I did not fall. I don't know. It always does that when I preach the word. It always goes into SOS. Call a, should we call the ambulance? No, do not call the ambulance. So this morning, the message that I'm going to talk to you about is called don't become weary in well-doing. And so the Bible tells us this in Galatians uh, 6, 9. Let us not grow weary or discouraged in doing good, for in the proper time you will reap if you do not give up. And so that word weariness means you've lost pleasure in what God has for you. you ha you've lost your joy. And so I thought about this, and, and I want to talk about what do we do in those moments in our own lives. And that's what I want to teach today. And so you plant the seed. And the Bible says that you believe the word, you believe the promise, you receive the seed, and you begin to look right away at the harvest. And you begin to shout and declare, and you see the harvest, and you visualize it, and you call it done, and you call it done. But there is time between the planting and the harvest. And in that time, if the devil can't get you to throw, to quit, he will bring weariness to you. He'll bring discouragement to you. He'll, he'll, you'll see like the battle. It's gone on too long. It's gone on longer than I ever expected. And I, uh, one day, and, and I woke up in this weariness, okay? I was standing on, 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 on something. I had many things I was standing on, but this one thing I had been standing on, I'd been seeing it, I'd been confessing it. I, I knew it was God. I knew what, I had the anointing. Tom, Dr. Tom had the anointing, and it went on for year after year after year. Nothing happening. And I was just, I, hey, it's too long. It's been too long. And weariness came in then. And so... I'm just, let's hold on to that because I'm going to go on and talk about a few other things and I'm going to come back to this story. And so maybe you've been working hard, but you've not, you've not seen any increase. You've been believing. You've been believing to have a baby year after year, but it hasn't happened. You, and many times what happens is we suffer battle fatigue. We believe for that promotion we believe for this job, and then we lost that job, and, and we've been standing in faith for the place that God has for us, but it doesn't seem to happen. I've been sick, but I seem like that sickness goes on and on and on, and then I was supposed to have been healed by that cancer. Then it came back, and, and I'm weary. I'm battle fatigue. I was fa battle fatigue. I was weary. I'm done. I'm just, I didn't say I was done. 
I said, I, I was worry, weary. What happens? You get weary, you get discouraged, and you get hopelessness in your life. And uh, maybe, you know, you've done the right things, but you haven't seen the right answer, the right solution to what you've done. And uh, you're still single. You've been believing for your Boaz. <laughs> but it's been years and years and years. Hallelujah. So what do we do? First of all, we've learned to run to the word. What does the word say? Well, David encouraged himself in the Lord. When he felt hopelessness, when he felt battle fatigue, he went and encouraged himself in God. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 uh, Thessalonians 2, 16 and 70, that may the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father God, who loved us, and in his wonderful grace, oh, grace is what he's done. Well, what is grace besides what he's done? What does he do? It gives you eternal comfort, the comfort of heaven, of God. And it gives you beautiful hope that cannot fail. Oh, my goodness. Well, faith is a substance of things hoped for. And so grace is going to give me that hope hope that I need, but it's also going to give me eternal encouragement because I, uh, in my heart, letting it do that, inspiring me and strengthening me for to always what always do good, right, and speak beautiful words. So grace is going to empower me in what I need. Well, hope. So I got to run to the scriptures that we stand on the word. Hebrews 6, 18 and 20. I almost feel like Kenneth Hagin here because I keep talking about this scripture because this scripture is what builds hope in us and that hope of God that we need because faith is a substance of things hoped for. You got to build the God hope in you. And so what does it say here? It says, uh, so it is impossible for God to lie. Uh, for we know that uh, we know that his promise and his vows will never change. So we're to know that. So God, so hope is about the promises of God that are already ours. And so now, what do we do? We run into his heart. Whose heart? God's heart. And we hide ourselves in his faithfulness. What am I to do? Grace is an action. It's an activator of what grace will want me to do to bring forth the supernatural of God. And so what happens here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And so, well, what did he do in the past? So faithfulness is looking back and saying, oh, my goodness, when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, crippling very fast, and I would probably be dead today because it's an incurable disease that attacked my body, but God... But God healed me and set me free almost 40 years ago. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Hallelujah. The time we couldn't pay our bills on a Saturday night, Dr. Tom said to me as I was loading the dishwasher, we are $500 short this month of our bills. We didn't tell anybody. We got to church. Somebody came up to us in the congregation and said, God told me this morning to give you this envelope. And it had five $100 bills in it. Yeah. And you think of the times of God. And he was there and he healed Dr. Tom of the kidney uh, situation. And, and they said he was going to have stage four kidneys. And by the end of the day, his kidneys were better than a newborn baby's kidneys. And, and all these things and the times that he, he was there and he got you this situation. And, and, and there can be little things that he did. And it can be big things that he did. But you start meditating on those things. Like King David. King David at the age of 16 was anointed to be king of Israel. Now, his father had abandoned him, right? He was out in the field, didn't call his son in. The Samuel said, your sons. But David wasn't there. He was rejected of his dad. And then, then that happened. But 13 years went by before he became king. And in those 13 years, I mean, he was running for his life. The king Saul and Israel was looking to kill David. 
But David would, in those times of desperation, he would go in and encourage himself in the Lord. And he'd say, God, remember that time with Goliath and what you did? God, remember that time when Naaman was, uh, I think it was Naaman, Norman, Naaman? Okay, he was coming to, I was going after him to kill him, and uh, Abigail showed up and saved me from that moment of, uh, that would have been so wrong in your eyes. Remember that time when the king caught me, another king, and he was going to kill me, and you told me to act like a crazy man, and I got delivered? God, remember, remember you gave me this huge army. You, you defended me every time David, or King Saul came out to get me. You were there, and you defended me in the caves, and, and you helped me not to kill, touch the anointed. And commit sin. And just before, oh my goodness, just before he would be crowned king, the last battle, Ziglag, when, it, when David and his men returned from battle and the, the city was burned and, and the wives were taken, the children were taken, everything was taken, they cried. David and his men cried till they could cry no more. And then they said, we're stoning you, David. We're done. And David said, hold it, wait, wait a minute. And he, I, and he went, and what did he do? He remembered the faithfulness of God and on the times, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And what does it say that happens at those moments? That we don't faint, we don't give up, we don't throw in the towel, because Bible says don't be discouraged. It's a sin to allow discouragement in your life. i got to go quickly. So what, did, so what did he say? Meditate. And this is what we do. We hide ourselves in the heart of God, and we start reliving and thanking God and praising God for the faithfulness of him. And this is where we find his strength and then his comfort. And so then we get empowered to be able to take what has already been given us in the past. And then that, what does God call that? Unshakable hope. It can't be shaken. I'm in the hope of God will, will not disappoint me, will not fail. It's unshakable. And guess what I've stepped into? The faith of Almighty God because faith is a substance of things hoped for. Oh, my goodness. Grab onto that today. Oh, get into the heart of God. Run there. Hide yourself. Meditate on what he's done for you in the past. Don't forget his faithfulness. Hallelujah. And we have a certain hope like a strong, now strong, unbreakable anchor that holds our soul to God. It takes our soul that needs to be steady and it holds it to God. And what is God doing? He's downloading. He's downloading on us. Oh, everything we need to be victorious. He, our anchor of what? Hope to fasten to the mercy seat in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold where Christ Jesus is, right? Our high priest. And just like David, he encouraged himself in the Lord. They were, now he was strengthened and empowered. He went and found his wife, his children, their wives, children, possession. Nothing was lost. And right after that last battle, so the worst battle that happens, the victory is right around the corner. He became king of Israel. His day of running was no more. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you today. And so I ha I'm over, to, I'm past time. So if you need prayer right now to get free of hopelessness, discouragement, and weariness, I want you to stand, and I'm going to pray for you right now. Today is your day to come into the very hope of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Stand up. There's many of you that are dealing with this. Father God, right now, as I pray in the name of Jesus, we command that hopelessness to be gone. They say no to that. They command that weariness 
must go. The battle fatigue must leave in the name of Jesus now. And Father God, we just release on each of them the very hope of God. God, now to come upon them. And God, now that they would encourage themselves in the Lord now. That they would run into your heart and they would meditate on your faithfulness. God, now in the name of Jesus, activating and coming into the, the building, the God hope in them that will never fail. And oh, wow, there's God moving right now. You're just receiving it. You're receiving it now. God, now. Yes, Father God, praise you, God, and hallelujah. Ha wow, God is moving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated, and, and uh, let's just close with salvation prayer, and then Dr. Tom has some words to share. Father God, right now, just pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me my sins. I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.